Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. Another day, another agenda. This time it's about the climate and now the establishment has been telling us for decades, you might remember, that we've been facing an environmental crisis. Pretty soon we're going to have a new ice age. Then we'll be underwater, icebergs are going to be melting. Think about the polar bears. We were told the problem was aerosols burning a hole in the ozone layer. But now we're being told that we may actually need to spray the aerosols right into the stratosphere to block out the sun. And now the problem is carbon, carbon like us. We're living under global boiling, extreme heat. It's irregular weather. Surely soon it's going to kill us all. The only, thing, the, way, the only way to save the human race, they claim, is by, well, granting our elected leaders or even the unelected leaders the ultimate power to remake everything. Truly, they have the knowledge that we all lack, the cognitive ability to steer the world from this disaster. It would be a Green New Deal, a Great Reset, an agenda for 2030 with sustainable development goals, a reimagining of the entire world because climate change, right? <laughs> In other words, we're told there's an unavoidable crisis. The nature of this crisis and the facts keep changing. They keep getting proven false. And what do they do? Well, they take those things and they turn them right around and flip the narratives. But the overall solution, most importantly, the agenda for it all, that really that actually stays pretty much the same. To solve it, we're told there needs to be a new authoritarian power capable of remaking society micromanaging our lives, changing the way we eat, how we travel, how we live. And right now there are groups pressing President Joe Biden to seize that power. This is the national climate emergency. Now, look, you wouldn't be wrong to think you already declared this. There were actually news reports just recently alleging that Biden had in fact declared it. But there's actually some nuance to it that's important. Let me explain. Now, during a national press trip at the Grand Canyon on August 9th, President Joe Biden gave an interview with the Weather Channel. Watch. Mr. President, you call climate change a code red for humanity. The World Health Organization said it will cause an additional quarter of a million deaths a year starting in 2030. Are you prepared to declare a national emergency with respect to climate change? We've already done that. The national emergency, we've conserved more land. We've moved in, we rejoined the Paris Climate Accord. We passed a $368 billion climate control facility. We're, we're, we're moving. It's the, it is the existential threat to humanity. So you've already declared that national emergency. Well, in the practice, you got a bug on you. Oh, thanks, appreciate it. So you've already declared that national emergency. Practically speaking, saying. yes. Yeah. Now, if you were to watch that, you could easily think that Biden actually did, in fact, declare a national emergency on climate change. The reality with it is that he came close. He's been doing a lot on it, but he didn't take the final step that it seems that the media establishment is just salivating for. The key word here is when he said, practically speaking, he has declared a climate emergency. Let me set the scene. This goes back to July 20th of last year. President Biden announced an executive action to respond to the alleged extreme heat and to boost offshore wind. It included $2.3 billion to FEMA. That's the Federal Emergency Management Agency. That's why today I'm making the largest investment ever, $2.3 billion to help communities across the country build infrastructure that's designed to withstand the full range of disasters we've been seeing to up to today. Extreme heat, drought, flooding, hurricanes, tornadoes. Now, personally, I'd wonder where FEMA is with the fires in Maui, but hey, that's just me. The program notably also includes programs for more air conditioners, offshore wind farms, and actually a lot of other policies as well. For the first time, states will be able to use federal funds to pay for air conditioners in homes. I'm also proud to point out that my administration approved the first commercial project for offshore wind in America. What was really interesting, though, was how the media establishment reacted to it. When they were gearing up for Biden's big announcement, they played it hard. The Washington Post had said before this that Biden was considering an emergency declaration on the climate 
Democrats were calling for it. New York Times even alleged that Biden's agenda on climate change, they said it had collapsed and that he would then seek a more extreme option, notably to bypass Republicans in Congress. The narratives and other news outlets were actually pretty similar to that. And it looked like they were all hoping for an emergency declaration. Now, the backdrop for that expected declaration came a week before. Biden was pushing to enact his domestic agenda on climate change. Closed discussions had been heated. Democrats looked like they had the votes and they were planning to throw out the filibuster to pass the agenda without needing a single Republican. But then something unexpected happened. Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat, backed out, although notably he later reversed course. But that loss of that single vote meant they could not push it through. And so they turned to the next prospect, an emergency declaration. And they said this would give the Biden administration the power to enact the agenda. But interestingly, Biden's executive action ended up not doing that. I mean, not quite at least. And the disappointment among the establishment was palpable. Biden's executive action was followed by the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. <laughs> Let me explain that. It was just a couple months later in August. It was passed under the label of reducing inflation. In reality, what did it do? It gave around $375 billion to programs on climate change and energy. This covered the estimated $300 billion that would have been needed for Biden's Build Back Better agenda on clean energy. In other words, it was Build Back Better disguised as a bailout, essentially. Now, the journal Nature actually even reported on that. They said that this massive program managed to push through something they said, quote, might bring the United States within range of meeting its climate com uh, commitments. And it was even framed as the single largest thing that Congress had ever done on climate change. But get this, even that was not enough for the establishment. Now, after all this, a group of eight Democrat senators issued a public letter to Biden. This was October 4th, 2022. They framed those hundreds of billions of dollars in that Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, as just the start. They said, quote, we need to build off the momentum from the, IR, from the IRA to make sure that we achieve the ambition this crisis requires and what we have promised the world. And they add this, quote, we urge you to act boldly, declare this crisis the national emergency that it is, and embark upon significant regulatory and administrative action. Now, Biden's recent interview with the Weather Channel can be interpreted in this context. It was one of the big questions asked to him. That was the one they were sending everywhere. The establishment is pressing Biden on taking that step. They want an emergency declaration. Now, look, let's step back from all of it. Let's have a look. All the money, all the programs, all of it. Technically, they got a gift basket of everything they wanted. And apparently that's still not enough. It raises the question then, what do they actually want? What would an emergency declaration give them that the new policies and the literal hundreds of billions of dollars could not give them? Well, it looks like the only thing they didn't get in all that is power, centralized power. And in particular, the power to do whatever they want without having Republicans or even Democrat defectors stand in their way. They could end industries. They could remake America. Biden could reroute funds to fight the climate emergency without needing approval from Congress. Yeah, how's that for your democracy? Now look, as Politico had stated last year, an emergency declaration would give Biden and the Democrats by extension special powers. Using these, Politico stated, Biden could, quote, unleash sweeping actions to restrain greenhouse gas production, such as banning U.S. crude oil exports, ending offshore drilling, or speeding the manufacturing of electric vehicles. It added, however, that the action would come at a steep cost. Deeper political divisions, likely challenges in the courts, 
and also higher cost of livings for Americans right ahead of the elections. But it's also on the agenda, and not just the political agenda, but the media agenda as well, which are controlled by six big corporations, I might add. Now, you might remember this from 2021. Investigative journalism organization Project Veritas released an undercover video of a CNN technical director. He noted that the COVID-19 crisis was coming to an end. COVID-19, all those powers, they were going to go away. People were tired of it. And he declared the next big focus, the next national emergency, climate change. Watch. I think there's just like a COVID fatigue. So like whenever a new story comes up, they're going to latch onto it. They've already announced in her office that once the public is will be open to it, we're going to start focusing mainly on climate. It's, our, it's going to be our focus. Like, uh, like our, our focus was to get Trump out of office, right? Without saying it, that's what it was, right? So our next thing is going to be for climate change awareness. Now remember as well. Climate change is blamed for just about everything. The way climate change is being framed and defined is all encompassing. The border crisis is being referred to as climate migration. Race relations are being framed as being influenced by climate change. Many news outlets, including the BBC, they've framed climate change as being, quote, inherently racist. The Sierra Club claimed we can save the planet by ending white supremacy. Guns and gun violence, they also frame that as being part of it. Others say our food is the problem. It's the cows, it's how we grow crops. They claim the sustainable food is gonna be bugs. Then there's the cars, the oil, the gas, the household appliances, your refrigerator, your microwave maybe eventually. There's single family homes, the need to phase these out for shared dwellings because well, they're just inefficient. Having your own home with a yard, they say, isn't good for the environment. In other words, just about everything is encompassed under the climate change narrative. And an emergency declaration to manage everything defined under the climate change narrative would give the establishment the power to manage just about everything. Well, that's all for tonight. Thank you for joining us. And as always, stay informed and stay free.